So for those of you who are living under a rock, a Naruto live action movie was announced. Kind of. Technically, a Naruto live action project was announced a little while ago when Lionsgate bought the rights to the creation of a live action Naruto adaptation. But the reason that everybody's talking about it right now is because that production has now been given a director. So while we've known that a Naruto live action production was in the works for a little while now, it's now finally starting to get a little steam. And maybe even a lot of steam, because the director that was chosen to direct the Naruto live action movie is none other than Destin Daniel Creighton. Now, for those of you who don't know that name off the top of your head, have you ever seen Shang-Chi? Because Destin Daniel Creighton was the director of Shang-Chi, also known as one of two of the last good Marvel movies in the last five or so years. Now, this is exciting news because Destin is a high-powered director who's already successfully adapted comic book stories with an Asian heritage, and at a high level, mind you. So fresh out of the gate, things are boding pretty well for the Naruto live-action movie. That's pretty much all we have as it pertains to news about the Naruto live action movie. So Nick, why are we making a video today? Well, because Naruto's my job and therefore talking about a Naruto live action movie in production is absolutely video worthy. And just because we don't have a whole lot of news as it pertains to the creation of this movie doesn't mean there isn't tons to talk about, which is why today I wanna talk about what I believe this movie will cover, the keys to making this movie a successful adaptation, clap back at some haters, and also once and for all, throw my hat in the ring for being involved in the production of this film. Now, I've been pretty vocal about the production of this live action ever since I heard Destin Daniel Creighton was tied to the movie because the second that a director is tied to a project that project is in pre-production as it currently stands Lionsgate is prepping to make this movie and that's terrifying for me because you know what hasn't happened I haven't gotten any phone calls but let's be real Nick you've never made any movies why would they call you well mostly because being involved in this movie does not mean I direct it I just either want to be a minor role or help in the production of the movie from a writing perspective. And now, considering I've literally never acted unless you consider this acting, which I kind of do, it's probably substantially more likely that I'd be involved from a writing perspective because I've done a fair amount of writing, especially within the confines of the Naruto universe. Every single one of my What If series videos explains alternative endings to Naruto based off in-universe knowledge that I've gained over years of interacting with this universe. And if I can write stories within the confines of Naruto's universe that people believe are good actors actual twist endings for characters like Itachi or for Gaku or Sasuke, then that means I have an understanding of the story and how to adapt it. And so I've made videos, totally not begging. I was begging. Directed towards Destin Daniel Creighton, asking, let's say desperately, to involve me in some capacity of the production of this movie. Because I believe being involved in this movie would be the blessing of a lifetime. But here's the thing. I'm not the only one doing this. In fact, I have two other friends who are actively trying to be involved in this movie, but in a much different capacity than me. See, like I've already established, I would love to play Kiba or for going more age appropriate, Asuma, but Yo soy Blanco. And if the casting of recent live actions has taught me anything, racial accuracy in casting is real hot in the streets. And everybody in Naruto is Japanese, except for the Hidden Cloud, who I also could not play. But I have two friends by the name of Ian Boggs and Stephen He, who are not only both actors, but are also both Asian. And they both want to be involved in some capacity as actors in the adaptation. And I would love that for them. So before we get to talking about the Naruto live action, I would like you, the biggest active Naruto community on the internet, to help me, Ian, and Steven get involved with this project. And whether that help either comes from creating a petition or emailing Lionsgate or texting the person that you happen to know who works at Lionsgate me, Ian and Steven's information, please, I'm imploring you, help me. Now, fortunately for them, that being Ian and Steven, they're friends with Simu Liu, you know, the Shang-Chi. So they're tangentially connected to Destin, but I am not because I talk about anime for a living. So I need your help way more than they do. They have publicists. I have a Cody. So please, if you are in a position of power or happen to know somebody who is, I'm begging you. I just, I wanna sit, I'll sit in the corner. I'll wear a dunce hat, I'll run donuts. I don't care. I just, I just wanna be there. Now that I'm done begging to you, let's get to talking about this live action. But before we get to talking about that live action, guys, please, for me, 
like this video subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell and if you just like the idea of me talking about anime news then you're really gonna like my anime podcast to talk is anonymous where me and danny mata break down everything that happened in anime this week it's available on youtube spotify and apple podcasts and if you really want to help me out go ahead and meander on over into my merch store where you can pick up some of our brand new nc hammer 23 for naruto live action t-shirts we don't have those made yet i just like putting little surprises in here for cody maybe we'll do like a political t-shirt where it's like nc hammer 23 for naruto possible co-writer maybe he'll just do whatever i swear to god he'll clean the toilets i like that so i like every other anime fan in existence kind of cringe when i hear the words anime live action and we're well within our right to have that reaction that phrase alone brings memories of things like dragon ball evolutions the death note live action and numerous other failed american adaptations of anime stories but Here's the thing, America isn't the only place that's been badly adapting anime stories for the last three decades. In fact, Japan does it almost monthly. Did you know that Japan has a Tokyo Revengers live action movie? A ZOM 100 live action movie? An AOT live action movie series? An FMAB live action movie series? Well, if you did, congrats. You're either as intrigued or unhappy as I am. And if you didn't know any of those things, don't go looking. They're all really bad. But ever since anime's absolute skyrocket in popularity since COVID, American production studios have realized that anime's a goldmine and live actions are a fantastic way to get the average American TV consumer into the IP. However, for years, these American production studios couldn't find a good way to adapt these IPs to live action. That was until the One Piece live action came out. See, the One Piece live action that came out last year was a masterclass in the live action adaptation category and this flew directly in the face of everybody's expectations on account of the fact that one piece was thought to be the hardest show to adapt in terms of anime to live action on account of its scale and its goofiness but why why did the one piece live action prosper when all others failed well as you can imagine it's for more than one reason see the first and probably most important reason is that the one piece live action had a lot of money behind it in fact every episode of the one piece live action cost 18 million dollars to produce meaning that the eight episodes of season one notched in at a grand total of roughly 145 million dollars to create making the one piece live action one of the most expensive tv shows ever created and a lot of that money went into set design. See, the One Piece live action crew built an entire replica Going Mary, as well as building out large sections of the Baratier, and so much more, and the associated costs with making an entire pirate ship and an entire pirate ship restaurant is astronomical, which is why, by and large, the cast of the One Piece live action is first-timers. Now, I'm not saying that this was the first time that the entirety of the One Piece cast acted, but this was the majority of the cast's first big role and this worked out perfectly because if an anime adaptation doesn't need one thing it's a-listers see the pull of a book or manga adaptation isn't the actors it's the ip so you need will ferrell and mark Wahlberg to convince you to go see the other guys because there's no existing loyalty to the ip of the other guys but for an ip driven story so long as the actors that are casted look like or sound like or act like the characters from the story that the ip is adapted from then the names who are acting out those roles don't matter and this is why the one piece adaptation did so well mac and you looks exactly like zora emily rudd looks like nami and naki Godoy looks like luffy and because of that who cares if you haven't seen them in anything before if they look like the role they sound like the role and they act like the role that's Perfect. Immersion is key to a good adaptation for both the audience and the actors. And that's where the set design comes into play. For all intents and purposes, the AOT live action adaptations should have been a layup. It was the most popular anime on earth when those live actions came out. So why didn't they do well? Well, one, the acting was clunky and two, they were a CGI mess fest. With obvious green screens, terrible sets, and even worse CGI, it was almost impossible to feel immersed in the story of AOT. But set design isn't everything. See, because more importantly than set design, what the One Piece live action captured to a T were the true themes of One Piece, which is the story of a group of ragtag individuals who are all differently motivated in the completion of a singular goal, which is for Luffy to become the Pirate King. But the reason that all of the members of the Straw Hat crew join the Straw Hat crew is not to make Luffy the King of the Pirates. It's to map the entire world. It's to find the All Blue. It's to return to Laboon. It's to become the strongest swordsman. But along the completion of their own goals, they also hold it within their heart 
to complete Luffy's, their captains. And this is genuinely the most important thing that the Naruto live action has to take into consideration. You see, where anime live actions trip up is that they adapt the story not the characters. If you look at Naruto as a series of plot events, you will never encapsulate the true meaning of the story. And this is a problem that a recent anime live action adaptation fell into. See, the most recent anime live action adaptation that's hitting the news world right now is the Avatar The Last Airbender live action adaptation, which received massive scrutiny for being both poorly acted and poorly adapted. See, well, the Avatar The Last Airbender adaptation did do some things right, which was mostly the money aspects of the show, that is to say that it looked very good, where the adaptation tripped up, was failing to adapt the soul of ATLA. See, the ATLA adaptation decided to change the story a little bit, which in itself isn't a bad thing. Looking at an IP and saying we're going to adapt it in a not completely strict following format isn't the worst thing of all time. In fact, one of the most impressive television episodes that I've seen in the last five or so years came from an IP being adapted differently in its live action. Now, what I'm talking about is of course, The Last of Us live action's third episode, which gave us a look into the backstory of Bill and Frank, two characters who unfortunately didn't get much screen time in the video game game, but got an entire episode in the live action adaptation. And even though these characters didn't play a major role in the video game, the creative choice to flesh out their backstory in order to make the impact of their death more impactful led to what is inarguably one of the most gorgeous television episodes possibly ever. And thus this proved unequivocally that you can change the IP you're adapting so long as you don't lose the soul of the story. But this is where Avatar The Last Airbender's adaptation went astray. See, from the jump, the ATLA adaptation committed itself to shifting the tone of Avatar The Last Airbender to a more serious one. And the core principle of that shift was to make Aang's character a more serious one. Shifting Aang's motivations from a child who happens to have the Avatar role thrust upon him when all he wants to do is adventure and enjoy time with his friends to that of a child who becomes the Avatar and receives a vision that he needs to become the strongest Avatar possible to defeat the Fire Nation. Now, from an outsider perspective of somebody who hasn't studied ATLA, this doesn't sound like the craziest change of all time. And in essence, this change doesn't change the story. A more serious version of Aang can go through all the things a childlike Aang went through from a plot perspective. See, because the character in a story is a vehicle, specifically the vehicle that gets us to our plot points. Now, any character can get us to these plot points. If in the Lord of the Rings, when Gandalf was fighting the Balrog and he told the Fellowship of the Ring to fly, if they actually flew, they still would have made it to Mordor. And thus in the grandest sense of the story, the plot wouldn't have changed. And what ATLA did is no different. Sure, a more serious Aang can undergo all the things from a plot perspective that a childlike Aang went through. But if a more serious Aang is undergoing all these things, then there's no character growth arc because to strip the child from Aang is to strip the character from Aang. See, the reason that Aang fell into the ice for a hundred years is because he didn't want to be Avatar, because he wanted to be a normal boy who enjoyed adventures and created air scooters with his friends. But it's his life experiences that happen on his journey to become the Avatar that make him realize that while the responsibility that's thrust upon him is not his fault, it is his duty. And there's times where that duty is almost too much for him to handle. And it's with that that we sympathize because Aang is supposed to represent a moment in all of our lives when we realized that we weren't kids anymore. When we were forced to realize that the adventures and the childlike whimsy that we wanted to approach the world with fell under the unbearable weight of responsibility. So if you strip the childlike whimsy away from Aang and you make him singularly focused on becoming the Avatar, you lose the take home message in the adaptation. Sure, he went to Ba Sing Se, but what for? What did it mean? And this is where the One Piece live action outclassed the ATLA one. Because while the ATLA adaptation looked as good as the One Piece one, it lost the soul of the thing it was adapting. So in the case of the Naruto live action adaptation, the most important thing to focus on is the characters, which means time has to be committed to flesh these characters out. And that's what scares me the most about this adaptation. See, if a Naruto live action series was being made, I would say, oh, they're going the One Piece route. Incredible, they're gonna cover all of Naruto. But we're talking about a uh, movie here, one. So what's the plan? Well, I'll tell you what the plan shouldn't be. 
cramming all of Naruto into two hours. But that is a legitimate possibility. See, there are really two camps here. Those who believe that Lionsgate will want an entire series of Naruto movies, and those who say they'll do all of Naruto in one movie and all of Shippuden in the next. And genuinely, I don't know which camp I believe in being a bigger possibility. Because here's the thing. The One Piece live action adapted roughly 60 episodes of anime into eight hours of content, which actually isn't a crazy burn rate. It's about seven and a half episodes of anime per hour of adaptation or episode of adaptation, which means all in all, the One Piece live action adaptation really only condensed 20 hours of content into eight hours of content. That's only cutting 60%, which I know sounds like a lot, isn't all that much in terms of the grand scheme of a live action adaptation. And Naruto, which is substantially better paced than One Piece, meaning it would be much harder to cut things from the Naruto anime than it is the One Piece anime, would really only be able to burn about 20 episodes in a two hour movie at that burn rate, which would put us roughly at the end of the Land of Waves arc. Now, I personally think that would be awesome. A whole movie dedicated to the prologue and to Land of Waves arc would be black, but is that logical from a movie standpoint? I don't know. See, I think speedrunning the Shinobi Academy, the Bell Test, and the rest of the prologue so we can spend more time on the Land of Waves arc would be the correct way to go. That is, if we're dedicating one movie just to the first 24 episodes of Naruto. And I think giving an entire movie to the Land of Waves arc would be a fantastic way to start a series of movies adapting Naruto into live action. But if you do this, you're setting a precedent. You're essentially saying we're gonna do one movie per arc, which works way better for Naruto than it does for Shippuden. So you could pretty feasibly and pretty easily break down OG Naruto into four movies. The prologue slash Land of Waves movie, Movie, the Chunin Exams movie, the Konoha Crush movie, and the Sasuke Retrieval Arc movie. But that's four movies we're talking about, which is a lot of money and a lot of movie, which is why I'm not super excited about going the movie format here. See, while going the movie format guarantees that more money will be spent on each individual project, it also usually means things are going to be condensed. See, if you're going at the burn rate of the One Piece live action, and there's roughly 110 to 120 canon episodes of Naruto and OG Naruto, that would mean that you would need roughly 16 hours of content to adapt the entirety of OG Naruto into a live action. And 16 hours of content is eight movies. So even fitting all of OG Naruto into four movies would require a way higher cut rate than the One Piece live action. But it's possible. Like I said, you can speed run the prologue. You need to focus on the important parts of the bell test, like the fact that Sasuke is able to pressure Kakashi way better than everybody else. But really all you need from the bell test is the takeaway moment of the fact that teamwork is necessary, i.e. Sasuke and Sakura giving their lunches to Naruto. But the Land of Waves arc having a built-in, incredibly intimidating and complex bad guy in Zabuza and Haku, who established and set the foundations for Naruto reaching out to bad guys from across the way with his words as opposed to his fists requires a lot of character building. So the biggest thing that you need to take into account when adapting an anime into a live action is not only the plot points, but also why the plot points matter. Zabuza's death needs to mean something because he was a redeemable character who tried to lead a coup against the hidden mist village because of the cruelty of their ways. We need to understand that Zabuza was bred to be a monster, literally the demon of the blood mist village who killed a hundred people who made the entire village rethink how they did their shinobi academy system because he killed so many of these students we need to see that character slowly become humanized through their connection with haku and how the death of haku makes zabuza realize that the most important thing the entire time was the people around him and more importantly than anything that moment needs to reflect on to sasuke who was going through two tangentially running plot lines simultaneously in the land of waves arc which is one that he needs to get strong enough to one day kill itachi but two for some reason he puts his life on the line to save Naruto, which is supposed to act as a foil to the Zabuza and Haku story, as Zabuza is a character solely motivated in making money and getting revenge against the Miss Village, but also who confusingly somehow puts his life on the line for a child he didn't think he gave a shit about. And so while technically you can adapt Sasuke stopping all of Haku's Senbon, or you can adapt Kakashi and Zabuza's water dragon fight without the context of why those moments are important, based off deep and rich character building moments it's like buying fake luxury items sure it's got the symbol on it 
but do you feel the same wearing it? But I genuinely think if I was involved in the project, I could help maintain that balance. But not everybody believes that, which is why today we're gonna do something we've never done before. And that is reaction content. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, today, we're gonna be dismantling a hater, mostly because I believe that some people probably do feel the way that this hater feels about me saying that I should be involved with this project, which is why I'd like to use their points as a way to bolster my argument for being involved. So let's go do it. Let's go be 90% of YouTubers and use somebody else's content to make my own. Look at me, I'm down here now. The title of the video we're gonna be watching today is as you can see, Naruto expert wants to be a part of Naruto live action movie because he knows more than everyone, which is, a wordy title, not what I would recommend. But apparently this guy hasn't exactly unlocked the secrets behind click-through rate, which is probably why we're looking at 165 views here. But let's give him exactly what he wants and play this video to more people than ever would have seen his page otherwise. So before we get into this, it's important to note that he's just kinda gonna do a bunch of meme edits to the short I made begging Destin Daniel Creighton to involve me in this project. And then he's gonna go through about like eight and a half minutes of stuttering and heavy breathing, trying to talk about why he hates YouTubers, even though this is literally a video he released on YouTube. And you probably will lose brain cells watching this. I know I did, but we're in it together now. So I, I load up, I guess. For Destin Daniel Creighton, future director so, of the Naruto live action my movie video, in the world as you can see, Lionsgate, you don't know me, that's fine. Naruto is my entire job. Uh, nigga, what? Here's, here's my thing. It, 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 it is my job. Like, I don't, how do we think we keep the lights on here? I don't like, I, this expensive plastic didn't come from me selling foot pics. I don't get, it's my job. A YouTube channel with 605,000 subscribers. I do, I do have Only that. talks about Naruto. <laughs> meme reacts is just gonna be like i don't care no one cares you made a 10 minute video about me i think you do care and also 605,000 subscribers is a lot of people who care about naruto but what do i know i've just been doing it for three years and on this channel we talk about theories expound on character development arcs and gonna go through a long cycle of, this of don't cares here universe i don't give a fuck Keisha. you do though and let's get a 10 minute video almost three years now Ain't nobody got time for that. I, I know Naruto. And so do most of my followers. Likes the back of my hands. Don't care. Don't care. Like, like, Still is it, don't care. Are we doing like a are we doing like an Overwatch meme edit here? Like what are we what are we getting at here? I don't care. And you are about to embark on the journey of a lifetime trying to compress this beautiful story this one coming up. down into a movie. Most format. baffling. Small wee wee. And while I believe a task as difficult as that would be little issue to somebody as talented as you. Hey, glazing. This one was kind of funny. This one, this, I, I kind of was glazing destined here. But listen, I'm doing what I can, all right? I get to a dick out of that, bro. Now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit I'd like to think as somebody who's written multiple very successful and well-received stories that exist I, within I, I the universe of Naruto. There. And as somebody who understands this story better than everybody on earth, not named my Sashi Kishimoto. Uh, I shut when you think about fuck it. Up. See, he didn't like that one, but like genuinely point out three people that know Naruto better than me that aren't named my Sashi Kishimoto. I'll admit possibly swag, maybe six, but that's it. That I could help you with that difficult task. How about, How about no? You? You crazy Dutch bastard. That's just, that's just a good clip. Being involved in this project Makes in no any sense regard either. whatsoever would be the honor of my lifetime. Oh, I bet it would, you fanatic fuck. So if you could find a capacity in which to involve Why you me, use your voice I would there? be eternally grateful. How grateful. <sighs> and if you're not Dustin Daniel Creighton, but you enjoy- yeah. Hey, so what's going on, guys? So now we're done with the, the brain dead part of that, you know, the actual brain rot meant for like the 12 year old lazily scrolling through TikTok bit, which is weird because it's, the opening to a 10 minute YouTube video, so it's not exactly gonna hit the short form styles here. Let's get into the incredibly riveting points that this man child brought up. As you guys can see though, by the way, he, he went really big in the graphics department. So you get to look at this picture for the next eight minutes. So the, the clip that y'all saw, bro, that this is a YouTuber and he, yep. he, said, he, he says he wants to get involved with the Naruto live action movie. I do. That's gonna be done by Lionsgate. Okay. Um, We're doing good so far. So you know, here's my whole thing about this shit, bro. I, 
You'll get there. Who are you, bro? Like, like who am I? NC Hammer 23. I don't know. Who is who is this again? Oh, yes. <laughs> who am I? I'm the guy you made a 10 minute video about. That's who I am. I'm not trying to be mean, but it's like, bro, like. Once again, not trying to be mean. Naruto nerds think they can contribute to the live action movie by offering Naruto knowledge. TF. If this isn't mean. What's nice? You think that because you have followers, you make Naruto videos that you basically are, I guess, valid to direct or not direct, but help out with the production of the Naruto live action. If you stutter, you realize you can do another take. And no, I'm not doing this because I have followers. This is the most baffling argument you ever see. People are like, oh, every influencer thinks that they deserve to be a part of all these projects. We're not saying involve me because I have followers. I have followers because I know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm not just here like flashing my abs and doing poses or reacting to clips with just the security or construction vest on. Hundreds of thousands of people follow me because they understand that I understand Naruto better than almost everyone. I didn't just like wake up one day and it was like, oh, Oh, 500,000 people followed me. I guess I'll try and get involved with the live action. YouTubers, they really do believe like their follower count, like, like, like it matters, bro. I wonder why he has this sentiment, ladies and gentlemen. I wonder why he has this sentiment. He's also a YouTube. I just, the, the separation of reality and what we're talking about here, YouTubers, it's you. This is a YouTube video. There's so many accounts that, that you know, as far, as far as like just people online, they talk about different things and just, you know, but they're not experts at, at the actual material itself, bro. Wh it's a whole other artistry, it's a whole other- Why? Why aren't they experts at what they're talking about? Is it because I didn't write Naruto? Do I have to write Naruto to be an expert at it? it it's, it's just strange. You, like, like, so put it like this, right? Good, um, good I'm a big fan work. of King of Lightning. He talks about One Piece a lot. But does that mean that he should be helping Oda write One Piece? Like, like, no, bro. Why would he help Oda write One Piece? All right, you wanna know why the One Piece live action was successful? Because the people in charge of making it were fans of One Piece. And Oda helped, obviously, he was also there. And he said that the what live action wasn't gonna get released until he was happy with the final result. But more than anything, it was because the showrunners were fans. They knew the IP. So if fans make the live action adaptations because fans understand what fans want, then involving fans is a pretty good idea. Nobody here is asking to write Naruto or to write One Piece. They're saying, allow me in the room filled with executives from Lionsgate or Netflix who probably don't know all that much about the IP they're adapting and let me guide them in the best possible way and direction to make this live action as beloved as possible. It's not a crazy concept. Also, this is gonna sound slightly crazy to you, but I don't know if critical thinking is exactly your bag, but me being involved in the live action is actually a good idea because of how many followers I have. Because let's think about it critically for two seconds. I have almost a million followers between my three pages on YouTube. That means there's roughly a million people who trust my opinions on things, would probably like to see me involved in more things. So put yourself in the boots of Lionsgate. If you involve me, involve Ian Boggs, involve Stephen He in this movie, that's marketing. So while well, I'm not sitting here and saying because I have almost a million followers on YouTube, I should be involved in this movie. What I am saying is from a sheer goodwill standpoint, involving people with established fan bases in a movie is always a good idea. That's why they cast A-listers in movies. If Pedro Pascal is in a movie, you're more likely to see it as opposed to some actor you've never heard of. So think critically from a marketing perspective for like two seconds and tie it into the fact that I know what I'm talking about, then me being involved in the live action adaptation of this movie is kind of a win-win. It's crazy. It's just crazy like some of these YouTubers, how they think about shit, but they get like this self-importance, bro. Mm -hmm. It's like the most and there's definitely no self-importance in a 10 minute video trying to yell about a TikTok. Goofy as shit, bro. It's like a hall monitor that feels like they're a cop. You know what great, I'm saying? Great hall, hall monitor at school going to be like, hey, you there, stop right there. Like, like, like they can't. Who stopped him? 
guys, genuinely, what hall monitor looked for his bathroom pass? Because I think that might be what he's actually upset about here. Be security or some shit, bro. You're a hall monitor. What the fuck, it, man? So, so when it comes down to YouTubers, they need to chill out, bro. Yep. They need to relax, okay? Yeah. You're, you're. There's nothing chiller than this YouTuber making a 10-minute video, yelling about a 60-second clip asking to be involved with a movie. You're like, like, there's so many times you'll, you'll, you'll hear a YouTuber talk about, well, I'm in school because I'm learning about, you know, just, just writing movies or whatever bullshit that doesn't make you a movie writer. Okay, I'm, so the fact that a YouTuber goes to school to learn how to write movies doesn't make them a writer. Okay, so what if they weren't a YouTuber? What if they were just a person going to school to be a writer? Would they? Is it the fact that they're a YouTuber first? Because most writers go to school to be writers. You know what makes you a movie writer? Actually fucking writing a movie. Then what are they going to school for? Going to work, not going to school for this shit, bro. I, I, but I've always hated these type of YouTubers. They're like, I, I, I know certain things. Shut up. You know how you learn really by doing, but, but you learn by actually doing this shit, bro. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, just do it. Just make a movie. Don't go to school to test anything. Don't talk about knowing anything. If you haven't been to the moon, don't talk about the moon. If you haven't made a movie, don't talk about movies. That's it, ladies and gentlemen, the winning attitude. But you, you saying that you're a fan of some shit and I studied a lot. I learned a lot. You ain't learned shit, bro. Shut the hell up. Hypothetically, if I wanted to step into a role helping in the production of this movie my knowledge means nothing because i haven't already made a movie okay i'm just trying to keep an active list of the points being made here it's stupid bullshit bro you know what i mean or i study this I mean, what the hell and so when it all comes down to this shit, bro there's a lot of just you know this YouTube show, it would give people a certain complex, a certain ego complex. That's me. And it's, it's just like, ego. dude, you know, none of us as YouTubers are special, but so many YouTubers, they feel like they're, they're the Lorax for their community. I am the Lorax. I speak for the people. I, I know what the Naruto fans want, bro, man. First off, Lorax speaks for the trees. Uh, second off, yeah, man, that's how it works. That's like electing a president and being like, yeah, because you can't hear all 1 million voices. We choose that guy who we believe aligns with our values. You go tell him how we feel. If you think Lionsgate has time to ask all 605,000 of my followers how they feel about how the Naruto show should be adapted, then sure, you go out and you canvas all 605,000 of them and you write down their thoughts. Oh wait. Don't, don't do that shit, bro, okay? So when it comes to, because Marvel, for those unaware, oh, we're on, a lot we're on of the people now. that they hire are people that don't know anything about Marvel. So, you know, a lot of the, the talent that they they got to come in, those people don't know shit about Thor. They don't know anything about Captain America, but they did some amazing work. You know? are, we talk, are we talking about the actors? We're talking about like, like Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth? They absolutely do know things about Marvel. Are they the world's biggest fans of those IPs? No, but... It's called studying for the role. They have to read the comics. They have to know what's big about the character in order to play them in a sufficiently accurate way. What are we talking about? They, they, they've proven that they're good at filmmaking, okay? And so when it comes- Okay, so we're talking about the directors of these movies. Yeah, the directors don't have to be massive fans of the comics, but they absolutely have people who have knowledge of the comics, everything from the movies is based on the comics and you need people with the knowledge you need the writers of those comics involved it's a massive part of the project it comes down to someone that studies naruto that's that's more of a detriment like it put it like this you, you know how, how at certain jobs like if you have a certain like uh, let's say let's say a certificate but let's just say it's like you know um i don't know for for, for like you know political studies i'm not gonna hire your stupid ass if you if you went to college for political studies to, to, to study study politics, which is what we do online naturally. Like, like first of all, that's that's you heard it here first. The only thing to do online is to study politics, ladies and gentlemen. If you went to school for poli sci, don't go into politics. Let's tell that to every politician ever. We gotta have a big government overhaul. Every single college is gonna teach you how to become a leftist. If you're gonna go into so-called political studies, are we doing? Yeah. I 
Are we just we're just doing anti-leftist bit in here? What are we into the deep state, baby? I would not hire your stupid ass, you know. So so like no company needs a person like that, bro. So the, my point. Wait, why 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 are we talking about comp? Why would a company hire somebody? Is the is the company the government? Has he ever made a point consecutively? What was this? Is that the person that you know studies Naruto? Is, is it that's as pointless as you know political studies, bro? So your point is. That political science is pointless to a business. And and then Naruto knowledge is also pointless to a business. But what if the business is making Naruto content? What if what if the business is politics? What what kind of credential is that, bro? I'm an expert Naruto talker. Like I You know what kind of credential that is? The kind of credential that helps you write a Naruto story. I talk about Naruto all the time, and it's like, what the fuck? Like, like it, it just, it just weirdo shit, bro. You know, it's like coming across someone that's like, I, I, I know everything about Halo. I, I'm a, I'm a Halo expert. Shut the hell up. First off, great tagline. Shut the hell up. I, you know, I'm also a big fan. Austin 316. If you knew everything about Halo, you could be involved in the Paramount Halo TV show, which probably would have led to a better paramount halo tv show ain't nobody got time for this shit bro but these type of people I mean, man you would have hoped paramount what did. it is essentially is, is it's like you know they, they want this certain title they want certain respect but they haven't done anything to actually earn it okay a uh, thousand videos on nc hammer 23 what what part of that doesn't deserve respect i garnered three successful separate youtube platforms all of which could keep a roof over my head uh what part of that doesn't you know glean respect this this doesn't glean respect because you haven't put the work in, you haven't cut your teeth you haven't made any headway in youtube what i've done is what you're trying to do actively you're not doing this for fun you're doing this because you want your youtube channel to blow up you want to be a reaction content creator but it's not working i've done your dream Dude, bro i'm homeless i make youtube videos this shit ain't special bro you know but when I, it all comes down to it like said, so many people out there they get like this self-importance and it's like you you listen bro I, it's great that you have passion to 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 want to help with the live action movie but you're not an expert like, like oh, yeah, I, I don't yeah. understand. Like, like, leave it to the experts, bro. Now, now, now. Who? Who are the experts if not me? But like, real talk, if you if you don't want to leave it to the experts, if you really do want to work on Naruto, make your own story and pitch it to Lionsgate or just, just, just try to get your own shit going on, bro. Yep, that's that's it. They're just going to scrap everything they have. Hey, uh, I have this story, totally not Naruto. It is about a ninja, but he doesn't have a fox in him. He's got a wolf. To, 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 to try to tell that man that that's about to work on, you know, Naruto. Oh, l l let me, let me, you know, help you out. Let, let me, let me, you know, fucking teach you. Bro, they don't give a damn. What did I say teach? What did I, what did I say teach exactly? And they should give a damn. There's millions of dollars going into it. You want it to be publicly received. They want a series of 10 Naruto movies. They give a damn. Trust me. They, they might make Sasuke black. They, they might make fucking Sakura trans. Yeah, you know, like bro, they're gonna push certain agendas. Oh, for for Naruto, oh absolutely. You know, but before Naruto was blonde hair, blue eyes, they can't have that shit. Oh no. All right, that's enough. That's good. Hey everybody, don't be like this. Be anything but this. Actually, I feel worse having seen this video. And if you and if you agree with any of the points that this stunner of a YouTuber just made, then leave them to yourself. Because here's one thing. I genuinely do not believe that the reason I should be involved in the Naruto live action is because of how many followers I have. I should be involved because every single day I wake up and I study this material. If I had four followers, I would feel as though I should be involved in this project, but it is undeniable that my involvement financially would be a good idea. It's called influence it's not crazy i'm sorry i gotta see the end of the video oh no they, they're gonna have to make him dark skin brown skin with fucking red eyes you know fuck it why not make, make him make him uchiha get that liberal they, agenda they, to, to the naruto fan base they're gonna be like i don't understand why, why, why would you do that well why not just learn from me like because it because it doesn't matter because you're irrelevant lionsgate is trying to pitch to to the normies and the norm 
that's what they're trying to do because the average consumer really really wants to see a naruto live action like you said these fans you know silly motherfuckers man you know what i mean I, I don't know bro like Clearly, I don't know what bro was smoking. Know. Like I can see, it. maybe he's, he just wanted like a you know a viral video, and, and that's not bad. That's smart, bro. Like so, you got me talking about this shit. Oh, that's you know what? Absolutely right, Isaiah Black. I was like, I want to make a, I want to make a video, not to get to Destin Daniel Creighton or you know Lionsgate. I want Isaiah Black. If his intentions are real or not, it, it just comes down to this: YouTubers are not experts. Just because we. So like, what about like Mark Robert? Like if, if somebody was like, hey, uh, I want to make a glitter bomb factory. Call it Marco Bear. Like, okay, what if somebody's like, hey, I really wish there was a way I could institute a whole system of having people put their hands on cars for 24 hours. Would you call it Mr. Beast? Like, I don't, how are YouTubers not experts on things? I may talk about certain things or study certain things. That's like me trying to, you know, put on my resume. I'm a black pill expert. Like, fuck out of here. I don't even, I don't, apparently I'm not online enough because I don't even know what a, what a black pill, I thought there was red and blue. Is there, is there more options now? God, damn, you know, it's all starting to make sense now, actually. If you talk about Bush online, that's not a credential. But I have so many followers that shut up, like bro, what the hell? Who cares? I just like in like completely in passing was like, I have 600,000 followers that talk about Naruto all the time. And it's really focused on that, which, I don't know, it might come from like a feeling of inferiority or something. Bro, PewDiePie has a lot of followers. Mr. Beast has a lot of followers. And Mr. Beast is a big Naruto fan. If he was involved in this project, it would be incredible marketing. So let's take a second here. Markiplier, famous for his Five Nights at Friday playthroughs and his Iron Lung playthrough, is making an Iron Lung movie. And because he was one of the most famous people to play that game and he popularized it with his playthrough, everybody's excited that he's involved. How is that different exactly? Should he not be involved because he's not the person who made Iron Lung? So, you know, just silliness, man. You know? Silliness, man. But, you know, it seems like, bro, like I said, he has a desire. He has, I don't know, like he, he feels like, oh, but I'm an expert, bro. I, man, what about all the other Naruto YouTubers? What about them? Involve them. No, fuck them. They don't know as much as me. No. Okay, here we go. I, you did I not earlier state that Six and Swag would be fantastic additions? Yeah, I'm just the one who happens to show his face and is the one who's talking about the movie. If they wanted to get Swag involved in the project, that'd be really fucking smart. He knows as much as I do, if not more. So I hope that was as enjoyable for you as it was for me, which was not at all. But yeah, if you guys know how to get me involved in the Naruto live action, please tell me in the comments below or email me at nixiecomedy at gmail.com. And while you're down in those comments, please guys, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell. I do not get how people do this. That was exhausting. <laughs>